everybody. I wanted to just get this while it's fresh in my mind. I just got in uh, to the hotel. What a trip. Crazy. The first thing in Newark, my plane was delayed uh, due to a dent that they found after they boarded us. So what they did was they deboarded us. Then they um, told us to go find different connections. And while we were doing that, they decided, well, the dent's not as bad as we thought. Let's reboard everybody again. So that entailed us being delayed another 30 minutes along with the already one and a half hour delay because they were waiting for people to come back to the plane. So not a lot of happy people there. In any case, that's one of the reasons why one of my boxes along with uh, the, the, the poor weather that the U.S. has been having, which has, you know, basically stopped a lot of the states from functioning properly in the airports. One of my boxes didn't show up in Manila. That's how it goes. What are you going to do? More fun in the Philippines. This is how it goes. You just roll with it. Because this trip, if you didn't roll with it, it was very stressful. Now, here we go. Before I forget, I wanted to thank Kim, actually known as Scooby. Uh, she's the best. She got all my documents in order, took her 20 hours about to get everything, research what I needed, and pretty much try to get as many updates from the different websites and consulates uh, the, at, at the uh, Philippine uh, consulate. And she did, had to do a lot of the digging and a lot of the uh, uh, looking for the the information that we needed so all my documents were 100% almost flawless and there are a lot there's a lot of documents to remember so I want to thank Kim again you know without her I'd be a bungling fool and I really appreciate her and I really love her um, so Kim thank you again now before I forget because you know I just got into the airport I didn't I I wanted to make sure that I detailed everything that you need once you know you get to Manila so the first thing you do in Manila you um, you fill out the arrival uh, card along with another card um, I forget what it's called uh, like a declaration of health card um, in the airplane as you're leaving Tokyo um, just a little rewind if you are entering through Tokyo your documents your passport and anything else you bring they will check that personally at the airport you can't do it in those automated kiosks that's one thing to remember so if you're going through Newark Airport or uh, Kennedy they will check your documents firsthand not by the machine Okay, <clears throat> going back to what you do once you get to Manila. So you fill out those two forms. Um, once you deplane, let me read this right. Once you deplane, um, they will ask you whether you're an OFW or an off, uh, offshore worker. If you are a seaman that's coming back in, that's working the boats and ships and, and you know, a maritime, if you are a dual citizen, etc. Okay. Afterwards, um, you know the Coast Guard, the Philippine Coast Guard. They're the ones that are in charge of the airport and making sure that everything goes accordingly in order. After that, they will um, tell you to go to the DOT, basically a huge DOT sign and lines, and they are pretty good. They were very, very efficient. So you go line up at the DOT line. At the DOT line, um, they wanna 
uh, they want to see your hotel, your pre-booked hotel reservation that's government approved COVID quarantine hotel. They want to see your passport. Um, they also want to see the affidavit of undertaking. That's something that you could fill up there, but I, I, I um, want to suggest to you strongly that you fill it out um, in, in the U.S. or in, in whatever country you're coming from. Just don't sign it. It has to be signed in front of the Coast Guard uh, personnel. Uh, then afterwards, um, they make you uh, they, after after you get through to that, and they check your 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 paperwork. You will then um, they will send you to um, the 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 prepayment for the COVID vaccine. You can go uh, a couple of different ways. Uh, one is a Red Cross uh, lab. Um, one is a pad lab um, and I think I think that's it those are the two choices so I went with a pad lab oh there's also the PAL route if you're taking Philippine Airlines I didn't take Philippine Airlines um, they're too expensive and um, they just they don't have the they don't take care of the passengers as far as I'm concerned correctly um, anyways uh, I, I didn't mean to digress uh, what you want to do then is you're going to pay 4,000 pesos for the pad lab, okay? Now, they can check a QR code if need be. We printed it out to prove that, you know, we, we, paid, we, we, uh, we scheduled it, that I scheduled it, but they didn't even look at that. They traced it through the passport, okay? Um, they want to also verify that you have a hotel booking that's government approved okay um, let's see what else did they have here hold on hold eyes ah while you're there they're gonna take your your um, They're gonna take, you're gonna go over, what, after, hold on, after you pay uh, your 4,000 and they check your, 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 your lab, uh, your, your, your pre, pre-certification for the lab that, that you, you, you've um, scheduled it. You then go to the, another booth next to it, it's called the verification booth. The verification booth basically gives you, um, the barcodes. I don't know why, I, I, can't, I, I forget that. They're, they're little, tiny little strips that they attach um, to the to to a, to a piece of paper and what that basically is is your you have to have that piece of paper and barcode when they come to your hotel on the fifth day to test you for the COVID swab. Without that paper, you're screwed. The guy told me make sure you keep the paper and the barcode in a safe place. Okay, so after you get that. They send you down to immigration and you present all your documents at immigration and also they'll ask for your dual citizenship paper if you're coming back in as a dual citizen, okay, um, which I am. So a, a, a nice tip from the immigration um, officer, when he looked at mine, he goes, these are the originals and I go, yeah, he goes, what you can do is you can shrink it down so that it's easier for you to, to bring and you don't have to bring the original. Just shrink it down um, and we'll accept it. And um, because he says after so many trips, those, those papers start to really take a beating and it's hard to get those original papers. So he said shrink it down 
and use that and they'll accept it for dual citizenship papers. I didn't think you could, you could do that because it would be a photocopy, but apparently you can. Okay, to continue, when you're with the verification people, what they'll do is they'll give you a little slip that um, verifies that everything has been paid off, you're good to go, and um, you give that to the, um, the Coast Guard uh, personnel, and they will then in turn, after immigration, they'll take that paper and they'll go look for your driver, okay? I would suggest that you get a driver through the hotel so you have no problems, you won't be waiting, you won't be gouged by a taxi, you know, you know what you're paying. Uh, for my hotel to the airport, it was approximately three kilometers. Um, it was 18 bucks, you know. It is what it is. Can't beat it. I'd rather have him waiting for me than me waiting out there in the rain, in the heat, or whatever else with my baggage. He was there, he had my name, threw the stuff in the, uh, in the car, gave me some really good tips um, getting to the, uh, about getting back to my province. Um, and one of his tips was get a travel pass, a local travel pass for you along with your driver so that you know when they pick you up and you're coming back through the checkpoints um, it'll be um, without any issues so they'll look at your travel pass and say okay you've got a local um, uh, um, address and you can go ahead and get through the checkpoint no hassle don't no must no fuss so that was a great tip for the driver and he got a great tip from me because listen information you got to pay for and sometimes that's what it is you got to pay for it it's a great tip and if you guys come home tip the, the drivers well tip the hotel clerks well you know make sure you tip the the, the bellboys or the bellhops because manila is a ghost town the airport is shockingly just a ghost town, kind of like Tokyo, but you know all the stores are closed. The majority of the restaurants are are, are closed. Uh, coming into Manila uh, International, uh, Nino International, I was shocked that you know there was very very little um, um, passengers coming in. And so, you know, in talking with, with the, with the uh, hospitality and uh, the tourism, you know right away that they're hurting bad. So be kind, tip them well. Remember they have families and they're trying to just get by until this pandemic is over. Okay, so what do you do afterwards? Once you get to the hotel, okay, you check in um, you fill out more paperwork. Um, you pay the car service, okay? They'll check to see that you are, you know, registered with the lab. They'll give you um, um, a piece of paper that tells you how to get your results, you know, from the lab once you're, you're swabbed. Um, and then you settle your bill for the car service. So, what do you do to get out of Dodge, okay? Number one, you need a negative result, okay? Number two, it's possible, it depends on the min municipality, um, that you might need an acceptance letter from their LGU um, department uh, to where you're going to. So if you're going to the province, whatever province you're going to, Batangas, Biko, wherever, in that local municipality, you might need to get a letter of acceptance to get in that you will then promise to do your, the remaining seven days of your quarantine in an approved house that they will visit, okay? It has to have its own bathroom, it has to have its own room, 
okay? You have to quarantine seven days and they will check on you, okay? And thirdly, um, after you get the, the swab, you log on to this website that they give you and that's where you'll get uh, your result. You print out that result uh, and, you know, along with the, with the negative result, the verification result uh, from, from, from the website, and then your LGU letter, plus your travel pass from your municipality, that hopefully ensures that your travel back to the province is smooth, okay? So, so far, that, that, that's how it goes. And I wanted to do the video as soon as I got into my hotel room because I wrote some of the stuff down I didn't want to forget. And again, I wanted to thank Kim. I wanted to thank my two sisters for always being supportive. And, you know, and, and a lot of my friends for, for you know, supporting me and, 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 and allowing me to get back home. It, was, uh, it wasn't fun. Normally, I have a good time on the airplane, you know, but... This was very, very uh, taxing. Um, just the way it started with the delayed deboarding, boarding, this and that, and then um, that delayed us for the connection to Chicago, which had me running, you know, across the um, the the, termi uh, the terminal, trying to find my gate, you know, with just 10, 10, 15 minutes to spare, which you know, for anybody that flies, that's cutting it close. Um, um, but after that, actually the Chicago flight to uh, Manila, uh, sorry, the Chicago flight to Tokyo, uh, beautiful flight, clean, clean, clean. The stewardess were Japanese, they spoke fluent, beautiful um, English without, without a hiccup, no issues there. I've flown other places Korean notorious for not speaking English so you can't even communicate with a crew um, similar not so bad with uh, with Eva when I when I traveled Eva you know I've traveled a host of them you know looking for for a good deal before when I used to go back and forth Cathay Pacific um, I just noticed that even Cathay Pacific they're so crowded they make the they, they they stuff you in there like cattle, and I, I don't know if they're able to do that nowadays, you know, because they are trying to distance you know people, but um, definitely I recommend uh, A uh, A N A, all Nippon Airlines, um, roomy huge jet, uh, they were able to move us around, so I actually got four seats by myself, so I was able to lay down, snooze, you know, really good meals. Um, so I, I highly recommend them. If I miss anything, I'll try to do another short snippet and possibly tack, uh, tack it onto this so that um, you know you get more information.